All right, this is Derek with In the Nest for Roost, and we have the pleasure of interviewing Wendy Forsyth from Better Homes and Garden. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Derek. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. So we're here at Ari Bar Camp San Diego, right before NAR. Um, how has this, this particular bar camp been for you? I know you've been to uh, several others. This one, for me at least, has been a little different because we've gotten a a very eclectic group here. Plus, we've gotten some people that I've never met before that have had the pleasure. How about yeah, how about for do. you? It, it has been a little bit of a different experience. The venue is fabulous, and so that is. We're nice. at Stinger, Stingery. Stingery. Yes. So indoors and outdoors, a beautiful rooftop location. So that's been a lot of fun. It's we think the largest bar camp ever. So. Yeah. There's been a there was a announced uh, participation of 570 something people. So that has changed, I think, the flavor a little bit. Um, the board is big. There's a lot of activities. There's <laughs> a lot, a lot of, groups. of sessions. Yes. A lot of groups. So it's not quite as intimate as other bar camps that I've been to, but it's been a great opportunity to meet people. I think it's been a fun energy throughout the day. And I'd say so far it's uh, been a, a big success. That's great. So you're obviously at Better Homes and Garden. Um, I've been following you guys since you launched, obviously, and I think you guys are just doing some incredibly just fascinating stuff you know you guys as a company have fully embraced social media um, you want to talk a little bit about that and why you guys have chosen this strategy and, and what it's really kind of brought to the table for you guys to sell franchises yeah absolutely we very much believe in not just social media but really the, the new media movement and that is the way that the future is going using all the various online sources whether it's blogging or Facebook or Twitter and we really felt in launching the Better Homes and Gardens real estate brand in this time that it was important that we not only explore how real estate professionals will use these new media sources in their business, but that we be active ourselves in using the new media uh, tools. So hence the clean, the clean Slate blog, which has gained popularity. Like, I've never seen a blog kind of do that before. It's, it, it, is that a great medium for you guys to reach your potential clients? Yeah, it's a great medium. The, the Clean Slate blog, or the URL, is uh, bhgrealestateblog.com. We launched that blog before we even launched our company and started with our first franchisee. And it's the only that we're aware of um, national brand blog that is focused at the industry. So we're writing content on there for the real estate industry. And it's a very transparent way for people that might be considering franchising with Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate to really get a flavor of our culture, our opinions, our vision, our values as a company. And it's also a way for us to explore all of those things very openly with the industry at large. And we feel that that is important. It's part of the transparency of the online world. It's part of what we encourage our agents to do in working with their buyers and sellers in their own sphere of influence. And one of our values is that you know we need to walk the walk and talk the talk. Right. You can't just, uh, you know, that that's what I've really gotten from social media is that you, you can't have a prepared message on one side and then do totally the opposite. Um, what has been the, I guess, the uh, level of enthusiasm from your newer franchisees that are, you know, joining the network and and how are they embracing kind of whatever you want to call it, media or new media, uh, in their own business, in their own local market? It's interesting because part of the dialogue before they join us, they're very curious about what we're doing and they're following along with everything and oftentimes they have friended us on Facebook or fanned our page or following us on Twitter and then once they join and we start working with them, if they haven't or depending on the degree to which they've embraced usage of those tools themselves, we see them sort of take a deep breath and say, okay, now I've got to start doing this myself. Um, so there's a, there's a learning curve there, and there is that hesitation that I think is not unlike many people. And we encourage them to jump in, we support them on doing that, and uh, it's been very exciting to see, particularly our offices, as we work with them to develop fan pages and to work with how they will engage with their agents and agents that they're working to attract through Facebook and, uh, and Twitter. So it's been fun to watch that um, learning curve right. happen. 
women, you know, in real life, so to speak. And then support them and, and kind of take them to the next level. Yeah, Is there kind of an epiphany that they have that they, all of a sudden they get it and they're going, oh, wow, this can, you know, it can, it can be fun mm -hmm. in the same aspect of, of really generating business? There's a couple of epiphanies that I've observed. That first one is the, oh gosh, now I have to start doing this, when it's like, it's not quite as easy as right. what it looks. It's not just setting up an account, you actually have to That's do the right. work. you have to do the work. And then the second one usually comes the first time where there's a key engagement that happens. So, you know, recently one of the franchisees shared a story where one of their agents on Facebook posted that they were kind of um, not looking forward to floor time in the office because uh -oh. it was slow. But the opportunity that gave the, the manager in this case was to reach out to that agent and talk to them about what was, what was happening in their business and how they were feeling about their business. Had they not had the connection through the social media tool, that agent could have been, you know, carrying those feelings. Right, they could have been disgruntled and just gone about their business and exactly. maybe done damage behind the scenes. Yeah, so, I mean, that was a real eye-opener to, to really see how a tool like that can nurture relationships right. in a way that we just would have missed those opportunities in the past. We don't want to think about it just as, you know, Big Brother's watching, but right. we can really, Big Brother can help you also. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to finish up, uh, you know, I talked to you a little bit offline about my interest in, in understanding how people are not just using this for business, but how they use it in their everyday life. Um, you want to share anything that, that maybe that Wendy is, is kind of connecting with, you know, cousins or aunts or yeah. mom and dad? There's so many ways. And uh, for me, I have family in Canada, all over Canada. You're not from Canada, are I'm you? I'm from Canada. So, she likes uh, to talk about that's things. Right. So it's a wonderful tool to stay in touch with them. So my younger sister is expecting her second daughter on oh, November 26th. And she knows the name um, that they want to name the baby, but they haven't disclosed to the family. So I keep Facebooking that uh, Jenna's little sister's name is, and I make suggestions on what I think would be ah, a great name. And I post so you're that almost on making a game wall. out of it. So I'm making a game out of it. So we, every day, every second day when I do that, have a little giggle, you know, amongst ourselves. And, and you know, it's a real fun way to be able to stay in touch with those people that are close to you. That's awesome. Well, Wendy, I really appreciate your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of uh, Bar Camp and NAR, and we just look for great things coming from uh, Better Homes and Garden, and wish you nothing but the best of luck. Thank you so much, Jared. Thanks, Wendy.